Dr. Pepper started here. There's like a museum you can see over there. Those are the silos. Okay, so I mean, there were some grain. kind of grain silos or something. And so there Waco is a oh, town that has... Waco is bustling back in the day. So when you look at towns in Texas that have this population, yeah. they'll have a little downtown square. And if you look at Waco, there's this pretty big downtown area. It's just that it didn't keep growing. Yeah, people would cross the Brazos here. There was a large suspension bridge. And to put it in perspective, actually, so like past those silos is the Alico building. When they built that, it was the tallest building west of the Mississippi. And so, and I know this sounds super obvious, but when you think about that, it's like there wasn't anything bigger in Dallas or Austin or Houston, but also Los Angeles, anywhere. And so it was just like per capita at the time, it was, it was bustling. In the 50s, there was a big tornado that hit downtown. But that's also post-war when they started developing like suburban neighborhoods and getting out of the center. So that combination of neighborhoods coming up with a tornado hitting, they just didn't really rebuild. So buildings in downtown were super affordable. But it made it a perfect area to get renovated, to, to be revitalized. Wow, you really packed in the houses here. Yeah, I used like every every square foot we could possibly utilize or whatever. Did you, were you trying to create a bit of a neighborhood? Yeah, so I wanted to do something else and I started with one lot. I think the, the typical idea is like, how much can you put on this lot? And I was messing with designs and I just kept thinking, man, if we could just get the rest of this, then you could make it really unique and you could create a, a feel that it's like a little neighborhood and give an example of what, what you could do with limited space somewhere. Because your story is also a story of how can people create a neighborhood that looks great? Yeah. You didn't come up with the same type of house. That was big for me. I guess when I was looking at it and I just see new development everywhere and it's kind of, and I understand why, but duplicating the same thing over and over again. And I thought it couldn't be that much harder to just be a little original. like. To, you know, if you care about the design or you, you know, you want it to look good and to be lasting. And, and it's fun too. It's fun to design something a little different. And this, so my wife, Jesse and I used to always say, it'd be cool to have like an old downtown building where you had like a loft upstairs and you go crawl, like wake up in the morning and you have a store underneath, go walk down with your dog and, and all that. So that was kind of the inspiration there. I just thought it'd be fun. Uh, and I spent more money on it because it's a lot of brick compared to the same square footage just because it goes all the way up. My biggest fear with this one though was sometimes when people are trying to make something look old, they get caught <laughs> trying to make it look old. Fortunately, I think that one, it turned out pretty good because a lot of people will ask us like, well, that house was already here. What was he, you know, they think it was here for a long time, so. The shotgun house, there doesn't seem to be any definitive definition. You know, some people say they're so narrow, you open up the door and you can shoot a shotgun through it. Wow. That didn't totally make sense. But from what I understand, I think they were taxing lots back then. So people could build a couple houses on a lot and then split the taxes. You can see this little white oak kind of ridge going around. That was the original ceiling line. So they actually framed up higher just to have room for the loft. The wood floors, they're like, Original longleaf pine. This, uh, they, they call it a ship ladder, so you have to really should use hands going up. So when I was here, I would use it as like my office kind of thing. Oh, you can put a bed or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's a fold out if somebody, like for kids or something. Yeah. yeah. So. Simple. Yeah. Nice. Staircase actually has a uh, strap that goes to a chain hoist. Now it's geared low so that anybody can, can actually use it, but that just means it takes a while too. So we were gonna put in a spiral staircase. It's a little bit of a process. <laughs> and I had a giant ceiling fan that I had gotten secondhand and I wanted to put it in here. And so it was gonna be kind of close to that. And I came across different staircase designs, like a drawbridge look or whatever. And they had one on a counterweight system. I just thought it was so cool. Wow. There's a real simple floor plan here. And you were living here for a while. Oh yeah, I loved it. Actually, we didn't have blinds at the time. And so you're three feet off the ground. So we, it's like you're on a stage. 
Oh yeah, like car would drive by and you like turn around and be like, oh, hi. <laughs> so we had to get blinds. So, a little better room feels pretty good. This basically is, we're at the back of the shotgun. Yeah. Here. Yeah, if, if you're doing the layout again, you know, to swap this on the bedroom, have on the back side, but you know, it's like- Because if you, wake, if you want to go to the bathroom, you wake up. You, right, yeah. right, exactly. That's a map from 1886. So, so somewhere in here is where the house was originally. And then we're now right in here. That's now where we're located. It was only like three blocks that way. It was boarded up and the houses next to it were boarded up as well. So I figured it was part of a development and that it was gonna get torn down. So I uh, looked up the tax records. We got a hold of the people that owned it. I just told them, hey, if you're gonna pay somebody to tear it down, would you let me move it out? And he was a little perplexed because there was bigger houses next to it. He says, but I like the little shotgun house. And so he was like, all right, man, if you want it, you can have it. You gotta get it out of there quick though. Fortunately for me, a shotgun house is dimensionally like a, a single white trailer or something. It's narrow and it set high off the ground where it was at. And so they run I-beams underneath the house and they turn the I-beams into a trailer, basically. They put an axle underneath it and that's how you haul it out. When they said, you gotta get out of here quick, I was like, okay, no problem. But I mean, I never moved a house. <laughs> we didn't have a lot to move it to. And so it was like trying to figure things out real quick. We didn't even own this lot. The apartments that are back there, the developer, they had ended up buying this lot. So it worked out because that's about only, the only house you could put here would be a shotgun house. They require parking on the side or the rear of the property. So you can't just eat up the whole lot. Now, of course, I had never dealt with the bank or anything before. So trying to get financing for something like that's obviously very difficult. So being naive, I call all these different banks and I'm like, here's what I'm trying to do. And you know, <laughs> they're like, whatever. And finally, one guy was talking to him. And so he's like, okay, so somebody gave you a house. They gave you an old crack house and you want to move it to some other lot and you want to renovate the whole thing. And then you want us to finance that. And I was like, yes, you know, this guy gets it. <laughs> And he was like, nothing about that works. There's not a, not a thing about that works. And then to his credit, he had thought about it and he was like, look, if you buy a lot that you wanna move it to and you pay somebody to move that house on a new solid foundation on a lot that you own, then I have something. Then we can actually figure out what it would be worth after renovating it and we can come up with a budget and you know, figure it out. So that seemed like a pretty smooth process. In hindsight, knowing how banks work and everything now, I'm like, I totally took that for granted. I was like, of course you're gonna get financing for this, you know, <laughs> but. So you were part of an experiment here in skinny lots. What's the small lot ordinance? So the small lot ordinance, basically, at some point they said your lot had to be this wide to make it a buildable lot. But there was a lot of, a lot of these lots down here were non-conforming and they were smaller for smaller houses back when they were built. And so people were, not able to build on certain lots because of those restrictions. This is an overlay district, and so they kind of came up with an, you know, a plan to allow building a, on a lot that wouldn't be legal in the town normally. They had a minimum width. I think it was originally like 90 feet, and they brought it down. The, the shotgun house there, so that lot was 48 feet wide. So how wide is this house, for instance? Yeah, that one's probably only, I mean, I think it's like 12 and a half feet wide. Yeah, that one's a narrow. It looks tiny yeah. on the outside. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's like, it's like if you took a, a shed and you stretched it <laughs> way out. It, it helps with the height, you know, because I think when people hear small, sometimes they, they don't know how to picture that small can be nice and stuff, so. I'm new to all this. I mean, some of the things like were last minute, like I had them all lined up from the front and it dawned on me before you poured the foundation. I was like, well, why would we like, let's just move this foundation five feet back, kind of hide it or, you know, break it up a little bit. I try, I try to make them all complement each other in some way or, or another. And so some of that would be last minute I and mean, they were getting ready to build forms for that foundation. And, and I was just looking at the form and I would just sit back and try to picture it. And I thought, oh, these are all going to be lined up. Like, I don't even know if five feet is gonna make that much of a difference, but it did. And of course we have limitations too, because 
the fire truck has to be able to get to it. So this one couldn't be any further back. And, and a lot of that's because the road's not big enough. So it's a one way road. So you bring it in and around. So I gravitate towards like, I, well, I tell my wife like a haunted house because when you have the dimensions with the high pitch and the narrow house, everything that I build looks like it's a haunted house. So I was like, well, let's break it up. Let's just make one with a little more room. This would be like a good family. Let the kids run around and have more square footage. Hi, mom. Hi. And so it's kind of funny. If you take a picture of these houses, they look like small houses, but just the proportions. But when you put somebody in the frame, then you can see that everything's a little taller. You know, these are eight foot doors. And so it's got real high ceilings. You know, you can tell, like 20 foot ceilings, very high. That's a high volume, low speed fan. And I always like the idea of it just flowing to the outside for the airflow to go through. And I thought it would be kind of cool to just see straight through. It's kind of inviting, like you see straight through to here where you could just open up the doors. And I designed these tiny little steel doors just so if somebody wanted to go in and out from the bedroom, then they could. So we used the eight foot tall and solid core doors. It's funny too, because these bedrooms look so tiny. When it was done, I was like, did I mismeasure this? Can I fit a bed in here? And then I was thinking like, oh, did I just build two bedrooms where I, <laughs> I can't even put a bed in there? So I was like doing the tape measure and, and it still just didn't, I couldn't tell. So I, I put a bed in here to make sure it put me at rest. In this space, there's no closet. We're gonna do like a little armoire kind of closet kind of thing. But also if people are sharing it, then everybody wants their own bathroom. It's so funny if people come in, if you told them, hey, it's this many square feet, they'll be like, oh, I need a lot more than that. And then they'll walk in and they'll be like, I think I could live here. So I think that high ceiling, you know, open. How about the floor? So it's just a slab on grade, just using the exposed concrete as your floor, that saves a lot of money. And I've always liked the look of it. It's not perfect and it doesn't feel like it should be. This whole AC unit is actually very interesting. I found out that you can actually have a ducted mini split system. So you have the efficiency of a mini split outside unit that goes to an inside unit. And instead of hiding the duct work, I did everything vaulted. I thought we would expose it. Some things I got right, some things I got wrong. And the HVAC guys came and they're like, where's your utility room? And I was like, we'll have to make one of those. So I had a little laundry here. And so we, I just put a wall in here. And so now it's a coffee nook. This was kind of cool. I'm like hoarding things away. This is, I had this in my grandma's garage for like three years. It was 75 bucks and I had no room for it. So my grandma had some space in her garage. Can we talk about the picture though? Oh yeah, so I love all these old Waco photos and it kind of shows you how big some of these areas are. This isn't even the proper downtown area. This is across the, the river in East Waco, but you can see all the buildings that were prevalent. So that was in 1908. It was a flood from the Brazos River. So, yeah. so Dr. Pepper's from, started in Waco. It did, yeah. It was a pharmacy. The guy, you know, they had like the soda fountain, you know, places in the pharmacies. And then another two guys started marketing it for them and then it blew up. It got very popular, obviously, so. So in a way you, you were building new structures, but at the same time you wanted to be rooted in the community. Yeah, I mean, so when we did the shotgun house, I wanted to use that to recycle back into this community and build something that wasn't just the same thing you see every day. This looks almost like it's older, but it's yeah. new. Yeah, so if it's pier and beam and you step up to it, it's just something your brain automatically associates with an older house. It costs more money, but you know, I just wanted to try out different styles. Well, we got a little Dutch door I'll show you too. And so it's kind of fun. Like, Wow, it's super hot and humid today and it feels great. The insulation yeah. is gonna be good yes, here. It is. Well, so that's one of the beauties of it too. You have modern insulation, but this house being pure and beam, especially if I open up like this door. So old houses, you, in, especially in the South, you know, would all be high ceiling just because the heat rises and they would try to line up windows and doors. After they invented, well, they started putting HVAC in, in houses, it was way more practical to go with an eight foot ceiling. So 
but if your AC goes out in Texas and an eight foot ceiling, you're, there's no escaping from it, you know? And so I just always liked the, the feel of the high ceiling. So I vaulted it and still built it like an old Southern house would have for the heat to rise and then everything to line up. And then this will get like a little serving bar. This will be a kitchen. And so if people are out here, then you can you know, pass through from the kitchen, uh, high ceilings. And again, so totally not practical. We've got living room, kitchen. Then, then you walk into unconditioned space to go into a uh, bathroom and bedroom. So a, a dog trot house is... I mean, basically it would be a shotgun house if it wasn't for the porch in the middle. So it's like two structures with a shared roof line. And so that's like the dog run or dog trot in the middle of it. And so I just thought it seemed fun. Like, let's do a modern version of it. And so you walk in here, real open floor plan. And this space is, you can see it's really tall. This whole thing is like, I think 588 square feet. The, the front and back, not our condition space. So not with the porch. And how hot? 16 feet, something like that. Bathroom. I wanted to have enough stuff in here so that it felt like sufficient. I didn't want somebody to have to go from one area to the other when you're sleeping to use the restroom or to take a shower or something like that. So really, you could even separate this. You could, this could be an efficiency kind of unit with like a small kitchenette, let's say, and you could rent separately that, you know, whether for, like for an office or something. So the zoning down here allows for office building too. So if you have like a, a small office, let's say if you wanted, you know, you could have like a, I don't know what it was, like an interior designer could rent that space out and have an office that people could come visit them and see their work and everything. Um, and then you could have a separate rental unit there. At your, we were driving here and even we have surrounding us like more conventional apartment buildings. I was wondering why we don't do this more I think it's just the business aspect of it. People like they throw things up. It's like, okay, how much square footage can we put here? And how quick can we build it? It's, it takes a lot more thought. These are iron door windows, you know? <laughs> so wow. just giant casement yeah. windows. This, especially to me from here, feels like a Charleston or Savannah vibe. Which is more traditional city that's kept that old right. feel. But at Waco, at one time, was that old town with a town. Yeah. Because those buildings stood so long, when, when it became popular again, it was like, it was begging for it. It was like, these are cool buildings when people finally appreciated them and then it started coming in and, and changing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because if you look down there, yeah. newer, I'm guessing yeah. yeah, they are. They yeah. are. So yeah. those are both new construction, the white and the black one. But it's nice. So you helped set this neighborhood in a way. Like you came yeah. in early. Yeah, I was the first on, on, on in the neighborhood. I mean, eventually somebody would have done something. But and I got to tell you, too, like we did that house and then I bought the lot next to it. And then it was kind of a stretch to go buy this all the rest of this. Um, and so I was telling my wife. She's like, well, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna build on it? Gonna, like, I said, well, we'll control the development, right? Cause somebody can build whatever they want and it's just always the cheapest, easiest thing. And I said, even if we sold it, you could build something that, that is cool and nice that people will appreciate and it will not look outdated. So, you know, if you can make a difference as one person putting something in. 100%, people... if you lay it out for somebody, you know, like people, you, you know, drive by something for years saying, if somebody did something to that, why not be that person, right? You know, why not do it? And then, uh, and then everybody else kind of feels more comfortable mm -hmm. to, to jump in and do that. So, but yeah, it's a cool little loft. <laughs> <laughs> Zoning used to be a lot different. So you would see a commercial building with a house next to it. And so you'll see a lot of that downtown, the brick buildings, and they would have businesses in them. So that's kind of what I was trying to create here. Uh, it feels like almost a shop, a yeah, front, right? Yeah. Like this big front shop room. Yes, yes. Yeah, I figured when I designed it all and we were building it, I was like, well, hopefully it works out. If nothing else, I'm gonna like it. Garage door, and I just always thought that would be cool to have like where you can lift the wall up, you know, so. But it's real simple, so this will just be living room, kitchen. It's a 10 foot tall ceiling. And just again, just a small bedroom with its own bathroom. This is considered a duplex, so we had to consider fire code. 
So instead of separating the two units side by side, it's, it's vertical. And so we needed to fire one hour fire barrier between the floors. So yeah, wow, you see that you've really created two units here. I mean, you have five units. Yeah, with the shotgun house, yes. Yeah. That's a lot on a, on a fairly small little place. Yeah, yeah, it's about a half acre. And that's five family homes, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's treated as multifamily because it's on one okay. plot of land. So then you have a different set of regulations. So everything that you would have to abide for for like an apartment complex. Okay. There's certain parking requirements down here. Well, this commercial space, so originally when I was trying to figure out the parking, they'll allow you to lease parking spots too for your unit. And basically what it boils down to is like you have a parking spot per bedroom. So we've got seven bedrooms between the units. I thought I would just build in the little barn door. Wow. So we did like a, put it on like a CNC machine. You know, came up with a kind of a cool pattern. Yeah. A lot of it's just, I do have a day job, so, and come out on the weekends and all that kind of stuff, but we're close now. Yeah. <laughs> the end is in sight. Every time we do something else here, it kind of, it falls into place. It looks like it belongs, I, I think. So let's say you want to create a community which wants to regenerate an area, but doesn't want to build the same cookie cutter thing. Exactly. Is that possible? It's 100% possible. It just takes a little bit more work or, or imagination. And then the more people that do that, I think it helps. It makes it easier to, to do it again in the future. So in this case, we designed all that from the ground up, but I can recycle those plans somewhere else and, and reimagine it in a different way. And so it'd be easier to implement it in uh, certain areas. Some people talk about they invent terms like pocket community. Have you heard about pocket community? Oh, -uh. they, they say, well, you know, we can create like a little town within a town. Oh, okay, sure. With that, you know, we put this little path and then we create yeah. this sort of... I love that. One of the big things that's lacking is, I feel like pride in something. So it's just kind of like, can we throw something up? Can we make it? And then can we duplicate that over and over again? And I think it wouldn't be too hard to just do things a little bit different, to show a little more thought or make something a little more unique because I feel like the lack of thought that's put into it, it becomes apparent every year that goes by. Whereas like these could be a hundred years old or brand new and it, it didn't go out of style. This stands the test of time. 